So uh, we made like three episodes in a row about animated things, and we're like, oh, we don't want to be like those cartoon channel jackasses. So now we're going to be uh, making something yeah, about gaming. Yeah, like Phyllis Productions. <laughs> So now, <laughs> we don't now we're going to be the sure. only thing worse, which is one of those gaming channel re- 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 rejects. So, we're... which is also animated, technically. Technically speaking, so. yeah, most of the time, yes. Uh, you yeah, know, whatever. So yeah, that's we're m- hey, mainly... most of the time. When is the game not animated? Uh, that time I asked, which was never. So fair point. <gasps> that's cool. I got him there. I got him. <laughs> so we yeah. don't really have a structure for this. We just feel like for the first episode regarding gaming, we should discuss what each of us considers important in games. What makes a game good? What makes a game bad? Uh, mm-hmm. Stuff like that. Yeah. I I actually Mark raised think... this idea right, and I'm under the impression that he raised this as just an excuse to talk about Mass Effect. So we'll see where it goes. I'm not gonna I'm I'm not gonna bore you with talking about Mass Effect because you haven't played it. So oh, we can't I really appreciate it. that. I'm gonna bore you by talking about Isaac. But... Fuck, I'm joking. Oh, will you? No, I, I, won't, I won't. I won't. <laughs> I totally will. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Yeah. So, like, Mass Effect does have a lot of actual systems oh, fuck, that I enjoy in games because. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not go, going to talk on, about go them on, at length. I think that I think it applies to a lot of other games as well. But I think, um, weirdly enough, the gameplay is never the most important factor to me, unless it's like a very specific game, like XCOM Two. Right, where I just play it just for the gameplay, or like Resident Evil. Yeah, you you really or, don't play uh, XCOM for story. Surprising, surprisingly enough, I play Resident Evil for the gameplay and nothing else. Um, He's mental. That's why. How the but, fu- yeah, like my fa- my favorite because it has really good. Jeez, it's insane. Really it's ridiculous. Have you played any of them? I don't need to. Oh, okay. Right, I know everything. I don't need shit. <laughs> That's all I need to know. <laughs> That's all I need to know. Anyways, yeah, for me, like, story and characters are always really important, because mm-hmm. I, I just, I don't know why, but what it is about it, I just find the game such a satisfying storytelling medium. Like, I can have a really mediocre story for 20 hours in a game, and a much better story in a two-hour movie, and I'll be much more invested in the 20-hour <laughs> mediocre game. <laughs> you know what there, I there's mean? Definitely, I don't know what it is. Like, there's definitely yeah. something to be said about uh, video games are just the the by definition they're interactive, right? So the mm-hmm. fact that you are actually interacting with things make things a lot more. I don't even want to say necessarily um, immersive, just involved. Yeah. By definition of what you do in a game, yeah, you're, you're more, just more involved. Exactly, yeah. you're more invested. As great as a movie is, you're not yeah. controlling uh, any. I can of the play a game there. for. Yeah. Yeah, I I can play a game for eight hours straight. I can't watch a show for eight hours straight. Yeah, you know oh, what yeah, I mean, yeah. it, like my attention just starts to wane after a while. Yeah. I start to go on my phone or whatever. A game, I'm there. I'm engaged the whole time. If it's a really good game, even if like the gameplay isn't that great, but if like the yeah, if the if I'm engaged in the, in the story, the world, everything, mm. I can I can sit there forever and just lose track of time. Unlike with movies where you get tired after watching one of them. See, this this is you know, what, yeah, I fully understand that. Like, even though I understand where Mark is coming from, I'm sort of the opposite in a lot of ways, where um, I... If, because if you're wrong. No, no, it's because I'm based and epic, and also my penis is large, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, it, it, like, games with poor narrative but decent gameplay, I tend to be able to sit through, interestingly enough, but... Me too. Yeah, it depends, Me too. Yeah, which is a fair point. But, like, for example, the best example I, I can think of is Rage. Yeah. The first Rage. I'm just gonna finish this mm-hmm. and you can go on, Mark, because, uh, honestly, the gameplay isn't even that good in that game. It's because shooting the sh- shooting mutants with a shotgun yeah. in that game feels so great, because it's designed by id, right? They know how to make yeah. a satisfying goddamn shotgun. But it is genuinely mm-hmm. one of the worst narratives I've ever experienced. Because the enemy that you're dealing with yeah. is just referred to as the authority the entire the game. The authority. The authority. <laughs> it's so bad. The First Rage is genuinely an awful game, but I played the whole thing. I've played um, the first hour of Rage 2, and it was one of the worst things <laughs> I've ever experienced. Because you're not shooting anything, you're just experiencing the beautiful world and story wow. of the Rage universe. The, the, <laughs> and I just, I never picked it up again. The magenta no, shooter. No, I, I agree yeah. with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can put up with uh, mediocre storytelling if I find something like either relaxing or fun. Remnant. I, I love to put on podcasts and just play video games. Mm. Yeah, but Remnant, I think, has really strong gameplay, honestly, like for what I it agree. is. I agree. No, I agree. I think it has really really good feeling gunplay and like a good dodge roll and everything. But I'm saying yeah, it has really so bad narrative. it's a lot stronger than like 
It does. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm not discounting games with good gameplay and bad narratives. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying I prefer the ones with good narratives over the ones with good that gameplay if they don't have good narratives. Uh, but sometimes you need sometimes you need to just put on a podcast and run around getting a check. Uh, that's off. very <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah. Look, what's yeah. interesting is uh, Mark talks mm-hmm. about how he's able to sit through mediocre gameplay if it has a really good narrative, right? And uh, yes, that's yeah. almost... That's, you can't. Yeah. I can to an extent, right? Uh, it depends on the game. Mm-hmm. For example, the first Bioshock, Fallout I'm going to get lampooned for this. Fallout New Vegas is another good example. But the example I wanted to bring yeah. up is the first Bioshock. I'm going to get lampooned for this, but the gameplay in the first Bioshock is actually kind of lame. They made a lot of improvements in Bioshock 2, I want to say, even though the narrative in that game is abysmal. <laughs> so, the narrative in I, Bioshock 1 is really good, but... I, I, hmm. Go on. The gameplay in Bioshock 1 was one of my... Like more favorite parts of it. See, he's I fucking really weird. The he's fucking the weird. First Bioshock. Just um, it didn't carry the game. I I kind of played the game just because I wanted to experience mm-hmm. it, right? And because I had to play it for class as well. God. I don't think I would have finished it if it didn't have the reputation it does. Mm-hmm. But I did enjoy the gameplay for most of it uh, until the end where it oh, throws yeah. so many enemies uh-huh. at you, and you can you can literally what I did is I ran past all of them. Mm-hmm. I didn't nice. shoot at any of them. I ran past all of them so I could speed run the ending. Yeah. Uh, the one thing that I think I was just also Damn. spoiled by Bioshock 2, because what they did there is they make one hand plasmid, they make one hand shooting, uh, because it feels so clumsy yeah. to have to switch between like plasmid mode and then switch between gun mode. That's one thing that I really didn't yeah. like. Uh, that's one thing that really broke up a lot you of the flow. Two hands. Why? Why didn't? Exactly. They, why didn't they do it in the first? Yeah. Thing? You have two hands, and like when you switch to a plasmid in Bioshock, it, it goes to your other hand anyway. Yeah. Exactly. You know? <laughs> so it always it made it made it really it's broke dumb. up the flow for me a lot of the time, um, but the narrative in Bioshock yeah, one's um, so good I sort of powered through it. Speaking of Bioshock, mm. uh, Bioshock Infinite I think has a uh, pretty good gameplay. Mm-hmm. I, I like the gameplay in that game, but what really carries is is like the world and the art design and the story. Uh, and I think if if that game was just gameplay, I wouldn't finish it. Even though the gameplay, I would say, is pretty good. I fully agree with that. But yeah. there's there's on, there's only a handful of games that really really engage me on just the gameplay front and not the storytelling. Like most of my favorite games have just kind of decent yeah gameplay and good storytelling. So yeah, I'm the opposite. Most of my favorite games have pretty much no story. Uh, let's actually. I want to go over some games where I purely enjoyed it just for the gameplay experience wow, i have okay. like a whole list let's Hold let's on. see them I'm sure they're all great because most way, games i i either play it as a podcasty thing mm-hmm. yeah sorry go ahead no, no i just thought this was important to bring up because mark talks so much shit on me for playing turn-based games throughout all of high school and the second he plays <laughs> xcom 2 he's like wait turn-based is actually really fun <laughs> that's <laughs> different than turn-based uh, oh yeah for sure okay it's it's turn based tactical. Like, it thing. is a lot it's more not, involved. Just, yeah, I will admit it's not Pokemon. <laughs> I will admit it's a lot more involved and multi dimensional than a lot of turn based things because your positioning on the map itself and the grid based map is also really important. But yeah, I just thought I'd mention that yeah. Mark's wrong always. So. It's uh, it's Pokemon for men. <laughs> that's what XCOM is. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. The Final Fantasy VII remake was one of my favorite games of all time, is because it engaged me both a lot in terms of the story and world, and also the gameplay is like highly tactical, uh, and I just I really enjoyed that. That's one of the only games that engaged me on story and gameplay uh, front. Uh, what about you? Okay, but like, like what, what games are like that for but you? There's something about important I have to mention about Final Fantasy VII, right? Is that um, that it sucks? Yeah. That that as well, but it's also you think you can go one on one with me? Hmm, come at me then. <laughs> we're not explaining that anyway so and if you get that you're a degenerate <laughs> so bioshock infinite is yeah probably the best example where i was really engaged both gameplay wise and story wise that's the best example i could think of um fallout new vegas is interesting through, sorry go on yeah. bioshock infinite i feel like i was pushing more through the gameplay to get to the story mm-hmm. instead of playing Instead of having like a neat balance like like Final Fantasy VII, where I feel like the gameplay worked sort of in tandem with the story, mm-hmm. but in Bioshock Infinite, I feel like I was, yeah, I was just pushing through the gameplay and I wasn't playing it. Like there was this whole combat trial DLC, and I'm just like, no, I'm. Not oh, I did that. not get very no far point. in that. <laughs> yeah. I paid for it, so yeah. I tried it. I did not get very far. It was not great. Yeah. What well, What were you saying uh, before? But like, you? like one thing that I did notice is that one thing that's that I, a lot of games struggle with is connecting 
plot to um, gameplay itself. Yes. And as much as oh, I yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, as much as I love Bioshock Infinite, I do feel like it feels like fighting cutscene, fighting cutscene, where the thing you just fought doesn't For really sure. connect a lot of the time. Yeah. Especially because I really yeah. agree. Just example of this, yeah. You continue. You continue. I really agree. Just example of what you were just saying mm-hmm. is uh, when I was playing the first Last of Us. Oh God. <laughs> um, I I feel I feel like I feel like for example the God of War four was heavily inspired by it and mm-hmm. it did it a lot better because in God of War, the new one, uh, all the dialogue and cutscenes are so heavily integrated into the so gameplay segments good, yeah. that you don't even notice mm-hmm. because like you'll be like talking to Atreus like right after a fight or right before or even during right and then you'll have a cutscene and then like it's but in the last of us when I was playing the first last of us it was literally like a 30 to 40 minute level Mm -hmm. with some dialogue here and there and then it would cut to black for like (laughs) a half for like a second right and then it would play a (laughs) cutscene that looked nothing like the in-game gameplay Mm -hmm. and it was just it was really baffling to me how but I could see how other games were inspired from that to make it like to integrate the two better. Yeah, especially God of War. Oh, yeah. 4. Um, Very God of War Four, The Last of Us is exactly fair, but I do see your point. Yeah, uh, I think a game that integrated the story really well with the gameplay is actually XCOM Two. Yeah, yeah, Interesting. because that whole game is about you starting from nothing, right? Yeah, about uh, you literally like just sucking so hard against <laughs> every enemy you face. <laughs> And then throughout the game, you you both get better at the game, and you also get better yeah, like, troops exactly. and better uh, equipment. And that's kind of the point of mm-hmm. the game is building up your forces, right? Yeah, exactly. It's really similar. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna briefly bring up Mass Effect Three. It's really similar to that game because in that game you're also a commander, and you do a bunch of side quests to get more like points towards your galactic fleet. Uh-huh. And how many points you have by the end kind of determines how good of an ending you get. Interesting too. So you do the side quest. To help people from different galaxies and stuff and then they join your cause and you get like a literal number in like a war room table mm-hmm. that's telling you how ready you are for the final mission and i thought xcom did something similar where you would gradually build up your forces and then face off against the final threat at the end okay so, I thought it worked really so, well. so you're talking more about how the base building actually connects to the narrative not necessarily the turn-based combat well well, the base building feeds into the turn. I know combat exactly. Because you upgrade your armor and your true. weapons. But yeah. what, what the, the very the very fact that it's turn based combat sort of does not necessarily take you out, but it's like well, a lot of the time turn based combat tries to like represent real life things. Like a, the reason you can only go a certain mm-hmm. distance is you only have that much time. Something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where yeah, it's it's interesting. It's interesting how they they play that around with turn based combat. But then you have like real time games like XCOM, like there's this game I played called Shadow Tactics, Sho- Blades of the Shogun, which That's is a real-time awful stealth title. XCOM. That is and a it terrible sounds horrible. title. That is such it, a bad it, title. It sounds horrible, and it plays horrible, and I don't like it. <laughs> I would rather it just be turn-based. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but uh, it's just like the way they tied the progression of your personal strength as a player with the narrative of you becoming stronger and taking on the aliens. Yeah, I, really I have to agree as well. The, the base building really Mass Effect into 3 well. does as well yeah so you're saying mass effect uh, yeah. ripped off xcom um, that's what you're telling me <laughs> like you came up before. yeah basically okay i'm right. okay sounds good um yeah but that, that's like final fantasy 7 remake and xcom 2 i think are the two games that really tied uh gameplay and story mm-hmm. well together and weren't just oh okay so we have a story and also here's a bunch of shooting galleries okay. i actually have an interesting example to bring up where the narrative is shockingly awful but the gameplay is so good we suffer through it i think you can guess what i'm about to bring up uh hold on let me try uh uh is it hold on i'm trying to think i believe in you i, believe <laughs> I know you. i i think i have something in my head <laughs> can you guys guess um, we don't script these um all right go ahead it's I, the middle I earth games something in my head it's the middle earth games it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> How could I forget? So middle. You know what's funny though? The gameplay in those isn't even that great. It's just, it's just the way they combine a bunch of systems together, yeah. mediocre systems together, makes it really. I good. still sort of enjoy hitting orcs with the yeah. sword. I don't know. I still enjoy the basic loop overall. But I do see what yeah. you're saying. It's not really necessarily what you're there for. So that's mm-hmm. why. That's why it's not going. Y- you're not there for the combat of that yeah. game. You're there for the context around the combat <laughs> and what you're doing, like. 
towards achieving you know mm-hmm. it's it's really cool they're really cool yeah so yeah so i i just i love bringing this up because it's such an interesting anomaly to me where the gameplay itself is nothing special the story is like genuinely skip worthy like even the first time i played it i would like actually oh, skip the su- cut scenes they are so boring it's horrible it's so bad it's horrible. and yet the f- two middle earth games are like the only game like some of the only games i've ever hundred percented yeah, because they're so much. Because they are so much fun. They really, I really feel like they should give off it's, the Nemesis system to someone, to some decent writers. They can make a really good goddamn game. They, uh, they really, um, they really combine that system so well with the design of the open world and yeah. the actual combat. Mm-hmm. Like, I think the open world by itself isn't that great. The combat by itself isn't that great. But combined with the nemesis system mm-hmm. and the way all the different orcs interact and stuff and have their own little factions is so cool and like satisfying but if you take those elements on the great yeah it's, it's you know? such a, a fascinating anomaly of games i love those games. every time we remember that every time we I talk about them games. i feel like b- playing them just because they're so satisfying yeah like yeah. It, it's they're exactly. like the definition of games you can just kind of pop on and go around and kill some shit with some with a podcast in the background yeah it's great and it will it will feel semi different every time too. Yeah, just exactly. Cool. Like, it's like, not just. But man, the, the it, character you're forced to deal with, the the cutscenes, everything. It's just so bad. Italian. It's just so Troy bad. Troy Baker. So bad. <laughs> Troy Baker. Yeah. He's also in Mass Effect Three. <laughs> of, what? Of course he is. He plays an Asian character <laughs> for some reason. Really? He plays a Japanese assassin guy. You're saying he doesn't yeah. play a scruffy white dude. No, wow. he doesn't really move forward. He does for not him. play Shepard. <laughs> Good for him. No, I'm kind of happy for him. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. oh, here's another um, interesting. Sorry, this is unless you had something to say. There's a topic I also wanted to bring up. No, I don't have anything to say. I was just gonna say if we wanted to move on to the next oh, no. like, oh, aspects, sorry. but you go ahead. I had yeah. one interesting thing I wanted to bring mm-hmm. up when it comes to narrative, audio logs. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> oh no. So what's interesting is I actually think <laughs> no. the Bioshock games did this fairly well. Where the audio logs are actually completely unnecessary for the overall story in general, yeah. but uh, if you're while you're fighting junkies, you can listen to some extra backstory. I I think that's not terrible. In the uh, I disagree in okay. the first Bioshock because for me, I have such a hard time paying attention to audio logs mm-hmm. unless I'm like super invested in the world, right? Already. Because the game did a good enough job introducing me to the world and then gave me audio logs, but I feel like all of the world building in the first Bioshock is done through like the audio logs. Oh, interesting. I just didn't find them interesting enough to get immersed in the, the world at all, which is why I, I didn't like the game. Bioshock Infinite, you don't have to listen to any of the dialogues to get the story yeah. and be immersed, you know? Exactly. But okay. Bioshock 1, you, you, it relies on them a little too much, I think. Really? I haven't played Bioshock 1 in a long ass time. I fully. Mark's probably yeah. very correct here. Or he's a moron, who knows? Yeah. But. I was also, <laughs> I was primarily bringing it up, yeah, because I remember it most vividly in Bioshock Infinite, because that's like the only. Okay, I played Bioshock two like seven times, but I replayed Bioshock Infinite fairly recently, <laughs> so <laughs> I do yeah. remember it there. And you really there don't need audio logs in that are good, yeah, but they're not necessary. Yeah, I agree, which I is what think... I like. I sort of like that it's not necessary because Th- if you feel like you have to listen to them, it sort of can distract from the game. Mild spoilers for Bioshock Infinite. I feel like mm. the the level where you where elizabeth gets captured i right, knew you're gonna bring that end. up yeah <clears throat> go on yeah and you listen to like the audio log so because you, you apparently you were gone for like five minutes but you really you were gone for like 50 years or some shit right mm-hmm. and the way they kind of like do this 50 year like character development of uh, elizabeth through the audio lo- through like very minimal audio logs in that level is really good i think i have to agree yeah I, you I, can kind of you can kind of hear her becoming like brainwashed from all mm-hmm. the torture she's receiving right because 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 you lost her essentially and it's like it's the most heartbreaking shit ever Damn and that was like the only good use of audio logs in a game for me <laughs> you make me sad <laughs> she's like one of my favorite characters in anything ever they, she didn't deserve this Oh, uh, she's great. She's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, yeah, that's, yeah. that's a really good point. I actually completely forgot about that, and you are bringing that up. Is, yeah, that's very true. It's mm-hmm. a very good point. There's one more thing about audio logs yeah. I want to discuss, actually. <laughs> because I personally believe that Subnautica did it fairly well. And uh, it could be part mm-hmm. of it could be biased, because I fucking love Subnautica. But at the same time, mm-hmm. a lot of that game is swimming and getting to places. Right, so having yeah, what makes sense to have audio logs exactly. There, yeah. So it makes a lot of sense to have audio logs as well. So you can just listen to stuff in the background. And the thing is, actually listening to them is most of the time completely optional. What happens is most audio logs come um, come with like a waypoint that you go to to advance the story. 
which there's a story in Subnautica. Mm-hmm. So you can straight up just decide not to listen to the uh, to the um, audio log, but you still get you still get the the uh, the GPS marker, so you can co- advance the plot, which I think is a really good middle yeah. ground. So you don't have to, but it's a nice world building. It's a nice flavor text. You can you can voluntarily choose to be a part of. Subnautica is like built for listening to something while you're playing yeah. it, though, because there's no like there's no dialogue or sounds in that game really that you need to pay attention to, you know. So it makes sense that they give you some. So I think I think it makes sense for those. Okay, great. So I'm yeah, not just biased for games because like, you don't like um, Subnautica. So. Go on. There's some games that have audio logs that also feature a lot of like dialogue throughout the levels, mm. and I think that doesn't work well because you want to listen. If you want to listen to the audio log, you got to stand there and listen to it, which is the most boring. <laughs> That's so thing in the world. bad. Yeah. Like in Fallout, like in Fallout, like you could you could um, encounter a, a dialogue scene at any point. Yeah, right? it's and, pretty funny. But they have audio logs as well, and it's like, what the hell? Why is this here? So you play Fallout yeah. New Vegas. Um, they still have some of that, but it's I did not like. like um, Go on. How in? Um, sorry, I'm gonna I'm ke- gonna keep bringing uh, up Mass Effect because I just played. I it called it. I called it. But <laughs> they don't do audio logs in those games. Mm-hmm. You kind of just look at something and then it shows. Oh, codex entry added. Then you go to the in-game codex and read about it if you want. And it's it's all very interesting. And I think that's I don't know. I, I like that approach as it's well. Actually, interesting. But mainly because their their world is so well like developed and fleshed out. I, I actually wanted to read that. Shit. It's actually weirdly enough they actually do that in Doom as well. Uh, like yeah, 2016 and Eternal. I'm some building in Doom is so <laughs> like you know it's it's <laughs> yeah you know exactly what I'm about to bring up right. But there's this little air there's this little moment in the beginning of Doom 2016 where um the, like Samuel Hayden contacts you and is and is yeah is shouting exposition at you and Doom guy just fucking punches the screen. Oh, it's great! It's so brilliant! It's so good, right? Even though they cheat a little bit, because later on there is a section where you're sort of hanging out in his office for like ten minutes, but I don't think it's a huge deal. It's still really funny. Mm-hmm. But still, yeah, they were under the impression that you know maybe some people want to read some bullshit for no reason. So there is codex, there is shit you can read in that game. I don't know why. I d- I've never met a single human being who does, but it's interesting that it's there. They went a little ham on it in Eternal. Yeah, they went a little too hard on the, on the codex entries in Doom Eternal, and I'm like, this is this isn't this isn't fucking Game of Thrones. Well, what are you doing? Like- I, I do like <laughs> sometimes they're like these little joke entries because sometimes you can read the codex and actually get good advice on how to defeat certain enemies. And, oh, yeah, and, yeah, that makes yeah, sense. And, and sometimes there's these little joke answers like like hint, shoot it until it dies. Stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty good. So, yeah. um, Which is another. That's are also... you ready to move on to the next one? Oh, yeah, sure, I think I can on. segue pretty oh, well. Oh, wow, segue. Yeah, Let's so hear it. This, this brings me to the next um, thing, which is player choice in games, and how important do you think that is? I want to go wow. first, because I have a bunch to say about this. That's a great transition, Mark. So, Continue. Yeah, because I want to bring up Doom Eternal in this section nice. as well. Okay, okay. So, I think that... Not in terms of like narrative choices, because that that's that's not doesn't apply to nearly every game, right? But in terms mm-hmm. of like how you play the game, oh, okay. Uh, mm-hmm. cho- choice is a very tricky line to balance because it could be like a Ubisoft game, right, which distills. <laughs> Oh, you can play however you want because we're making games for everybody, and it's the most lukewarm <laughs> shit ever, right? Because it doesn't—it's not focused on anything. It's—it's it's fucking boring, mm-hmm. essentially, right? Because you can just play it any way you want, and the game is built for every way of playing, which means that no way of playing excels, and it's—it's it's probably just very a very lukewarm, mediocre experience. Sort of a jack of but all then, trades, master of none sort of scenario. Yeah, but but then you have like Doom Eternal, which essentially forces you to play the way it wants you to play mm. and it's like one of the most intense amazing experiences ever right very true but at the same time it is so experienced at making shooters and stuff like mm-hmm. that i feel like nobody other than like a super experienced shooter developer would be able to pull yeah. off something as restrictive as doom eternal and make it fun mm-hmm. you know what i mean because it essentially knows better what is fun than i do which is why they're forcing me to play in the way that Doom Eternal is supposed to be played. <laughs> yeah, you, you didn't go to school for game design. Of, the fuck do you know? Uh, yeah. Exactly. Mm. But like things like like Ubisoft games, they're so afraid of uh, forcing you to play a certain mm-hmm. way in because they would turn away certain players, right? Mm. 
that they don't focus on anything. And I think even if they did force you to play a certain way, it would be shit because they're just not good at making games. Mm -hmm. But it's a very it's a very fine line, I think. Yeah. It's like, just sorry, um, because he brought up Doom Eternal, right? So now I'm not going to be able to shut up, right? Because it's one of those flawless games of all time. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> it's, it just it's very oh, it's interesting. So great. Yeah, it's yeah, incredible. It. <laughs> I love it so much. But uh, one thing that mm -hmm. I you say that it's restrictive, which is true. But at the same time, the reason why I think it's wor it works is because it's restrictive, but at the same time, very versatile. Where it's it's restrictive, and through being restrictive, it forces you to, to play, be versatile. Exactly. To, to experience. It it forces you to experience <laughs> every aspect of the game. So yeah, what? Uh, because mm, go on. Yeah, for example, I feel like I was getting. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna keep bringing up Mass Effect Three because it's in my mind. I was getting bored with the combat towards the end mm -hmm. of that game because I kept using the same weapon the entire time yep. and it was just working the entire time. Nothing was changing, right? Doom Eternal forces you to use a different weapon mm -hmm. for every single enemy type, and that makes it so much more fun. Exactly. Because you're not just stuck to doing the same shit for eight hours, essentially, they, right? They did like in Mass Effect Three, I, I was doing the exact same thing for thirty <laughs> hours, and bored by the end. Like that's what's yeah. interesting is that the the answers for problems like this are always so simple. All they did in Doom Eternal was just slightly limit the ammo you get. So yeah. people can't just be and babysat. also yeah. make exactly certain, bring like that up. Mm -hmm. you know what else they did? Yeah, yeah they throw so any so many enemies mm -hmm. at you, you can't afford to not dispatch them efficiently. Yeah, exactly. That's a, such a good way to put it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And mm -hmm. certain enemies have certain weaknesses, yeah, right? Like the force field guys, they explode if you use a plasma rifle. The caco demons swallow the grenade. <laughs> 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 this is incredible in its own right, yeah, but yeah. yeah. So it really forces you to like, yeah, it really, it, like, there's this term I like to say where it says, puts its dick on the table, right? Where Literally, Doom Eternal puts it its does. dick on yeah. the table and it's like, you have to play this way or you will die a lot. Unless you play in like ultra, ultra easy yeah. or whatever, but like, a lot, even, mm -hmm. even you played on easy and even then it was still a bit of a struggle. I played on easy and it was still challenging, yeah. 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 Like not talking shit on Mark, <laughs> even though I totally am. <laughs> that's the idea. No, I play everything on easy. Yeah. I'm just gonna admit it right now. I play everything on easy. <laughs> I enjoy things that way. I don't see what dying countless times is gonna add to my experience of a game. I just don't see it. Yeah, he's he's a little bitch. That's why. No, I see what he's saying. Doing I just I don't unless it's a roguelike. Okay. Unless it's a roguelike. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Ah, you gotta play more <laughs> Isaac. But yeah, anyway. So yeah, so that's a really good point. Where what Doom Eternal forces you to do is it forces you to be versatile through its limitations, which. Is no other game is has been able to bring it up. I had an idea for an episode: how Doom Eternal ruined first-person shooters. Because now any other first-person oh, yeah, shooter yeah. I play is just is just slower Doom Eternal. It's 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 yeah. it's exhausting. It's not just slower. It's like, why shouldn't I just use the boring assault rifle the entire yeah, time? Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, like I know it's boring, but I can I can keep using it because it's a viable strategy. Yep. Meanwhile, Doom Eternal is like, no, you have to have fun to beat it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a really good way to put it. Exactly. Like, yeah. It's just, it's beautiful. I love it. But at the same time, again, as, as, as I said earlier, it's a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. Because I fucking, I hate Dark Souls for this exact same reason. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> because I feel like Dark Souls give you so many, like, at least from what I've experienced, right? It gives you so many, like, build varieties or whatever. But at the same time, it still forces you to play It's a very in a very specific way. And I don't get it. Meanwhile, like, there are other games. Sekiro, I feel like it just forces you to play one way the whole time. Mm -hmm. And... That works better because they're not trying to pretend like they give you options like they do in Dark Souls. I don't fully agree <laughs> I with. I don't. I just. Uh, yeah. Mark Marcus right here to an extent where uh, Dark Souls is. I'm I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I think Dark Souls one and two are genuinely awful games, like in terms of a design perspective. Yeah. I think Dark Souls three is their first game that's mm -hmm. actually genuinely playable and actually has some build variety. But yeah, for, for Dark, Souls, yeah. Dark Souls one, Dark Souls one especially. They accidentally made the Black Knight weapons extremely overpowered, and if you don't play with them, you're gonna. It's just, it's just, it's just not the same experience. Where Dark Souls three, mm -hmm. I feel it actually gives you a lot of room to experiment and play around with builds. Because one thing that they do that's very interesting, you have five complete uh, like resets per per run. Like you can completely reset mm -hmm. your stats, do something completely different. You can do that only five times per run, though. Otherwise, it'd be a little overpowered, right? So, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I agree with Mark here. I actually personally like the choice, even though I do agree with Mark that it can be a bit overwhelming and it can really muddy an experience. Not overwhelming. I, I think I, I think they present you with possibilities of build diversity, but at the same time, 
they also want you to play the game in a mm -hmm. very specific way, which I don't understand. I don't understand why you would do both. <clears throat> Meanwhile, like Sekiro, it doesn't give you any build variety, and you kind of just have to play it like they want you to play <sighs> it the whole time, which I think makes more sense that makes, yeah, than the whole Dark Souls play. RPG thing. Like Sekiro is unplayable, yeah. but I see your logic. <laughs> it's much more playable, man. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm Sekiro requires good reflexes. Reflexes have always been a struggle of mine. I cannot play that game. Yeah, I just I've not been able to. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, so, I had a lot of fun until they threw the Dark Souls enemy at you. Uh, you know, in a game that's not built like Dark Souls. That's apparently a very common quitting point for a lot of people. I was having a lot of fun, yeah. and then it's just like, nope, you gotta fight a Dark Souls boss. Yeah, you're now, talking about the chained ogre, for no right? Reason. Yeah, yes, yeah, a lot of people quit at that on, point. I, yeah. but I just I don't I don't enjoy hard games in general. Like difficulty for me, like, is very secondary in terms of what I enjoy. I think if a, I think a satisfying difficulty curve is very dif hard to achieve. And some of my favorite games in terms of like gameplay do achieve it, like Resident Evil Four mm -hmm. and XCOM Two. I was gonna bring up XCOM really Two well. exactly. This is mm -hmm. this is something you pointed out actually. Yeah, so um, I'm gonna steal this from you. But what's really interesting about XCOM mm -hmm. Two is you start off like essentially wet paper. Right, your guys panic yes. if a wasp wa gets into the car. They miss everything. It's 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 not it's pathetic. But later on, you can become so ridiculously overpowered that it yeah. sort of now we have the opposite issue where all this shit is way too easy. But XCOM Two ends pretty much right at that exact moment where it stops being fun. Ends right when you get yeah, super exactly. when you get super overpowered. Yeah, I love I love yeah. it. I love that. Mark it's pointed so this out. That's very true. Yeah. That's very true. XCOM the, the original XCOM. Actually, I think lasted a bit too long after you become overpowered. XCOM 2 really uh, mastered yeah, the timing. Um, this is actually a good segue into pacing. Of wow. Um, yeah, because uh, I think pacing is very important. Again, I'm going to keep bringing these up, even though I said I won't. He's I, uh, I called it. Ma Mass Effect 3 overstays its welcome so hard. Mm -hmm. I was getting so exhausted by the end. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile... Mass Effect 2 ends, like, right where the story reaches its, like, highest point. Right. And then it just ends. And it's beautiful. Wow. Mass Effect 3 g reaches its highest point, like, 10 hours in, goes on for another mm -hmm. 20 hours. I was fucking exhausted by the end. Yeah, what, what games do you think have good pacing, John? So, this is actually interesting. I wanted to bring this up as well, where uh, Doom 2016 is... Essentially, Doom Eternal. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly. Example, you know, yeah. he knows exactly what I'm going to bring up, right? Where Doom 2016 mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. was a lot less intense, I'd say, than Doom Eternal, and was yeah. a lot less. And, and I don't want to say it's actually the opposite. Despite it being less difficult and less intense, it was a lot more draining for some reason. I was, it was exhausting. yeah, for some reason, I was not able to play that game for very long. As much as I love Doom 2016. Doom Eternal, Same. I finished in like three mm -hmm. to four sittings or something ridiculous like that. It's just so difficult to put Doom Eternal down. Yeah, it's because they have the downtime in between. Right? Yeah, exactly. But if it was just because Doom, Doom 2016 is just shooting the entire Pretty time, much, yeah. which sounds great on paper, but it's really not. Mm -hmm. It's it's if it's if it's at 11 out of 10 intensity for eight hours straight, you're going to get exhausted yeah. after the first like hour or two. And it took me months to finish Doom's 2016, even though I loved it. Yeah, I because agree. of this, because it was so exhausting. Doom Eternal, I also finished in like two or three sittings because it was just like there was the platforming sections, which, yeah. which, which get too much hate, and I actually like them. Yeah, uh, I actually enjoy the, the, uh, it's, like the. It's the goo that I really don't enjoy, but the platforming I don't mind at all. Yeah, the goo. Yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> the goo. No, but I was yeah, there. Yeah, um, I was there. I accidentally stayed up with because like we would do share play, and I accidentally stayed up with this kid until like mm -hmm. three a.m. while he was beating the final boss. It was awesome. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, Resident Evil 4, I think, has the best pace out of any game I've played, honestly. There wow. is just... There is such perfect, like, balance of intense fights and also downtime in that game. I, I love that game. I'm not going to discuss it with you because you haven't played it and you're yeah. interested in playing it, but well, yeah, well, that game was the most perfect pacing out of any game. I like, think. my primary issue with Resident Evil 4, actually, is that it sucks ass and you should feel bad. Right, right, right. right? Mm -hmm. So the fact that I've never played it does not stop mm -hmm. me from knowing this as well. That's how bad it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, but like even that's actually one of the reasons it's like one of the most critically acclaimed games of all time, just because it has such a good pay. Like it never gets boring. It literally never gets boring for its entire twelve hours. It's insane. Also, obligatory bio. You can't really have this conversation without bringing up Bioshock games. Um, I think that. Oh, yeah. I think that. Yeah. What? Please. 
this this sort of also brings up the idea of atmosphere. I feel like what a lot of also works in Resident Evil Four probably is that a lot of the downtime also uses mm-hmm. is used to build up atmosphere. Am I am I correct? Yes, for sure. Okay. Yep. Yep. That, that, yep. Mm-hmm. So especially in Bioshock One, you have despite you're not necessarily shooting something, despite the fact there's not necessarily story going on, you walking and experiencing this world really does add to the atmosphere and why I think that game isn't really boring. Yeah, that game's never really boring at any point. In a lot of games, downtime is some of my favorite like moments <laughs> of the game, honestly. Mm. Wow. Like just running around my ship talking to my crewmates, you know, in and Mass Effect. Are they was, sus? Like, the best part of the game. It it wasn't the <laughs> go, go, go. I'm sorry, go on. Continue, continue. Please let's Garris just Garris vented. Get, stop <laughs> Why did I bring it up? Continue. Uh, <laughs> um, like I would literally, I would dread every time I would have to get to the combat section of a of a mission in Mass that's Effect. That's interesting because uh, I'm just like, I just want to run around my ship, talk to people, <laughs> and listen to them talk, and have the world building. I don't want to fucking shoot anything. Like stop. See, <laughs> now this is this is also a really good place to bring up Fallout New Vegas, where as much as I adore that game, the downtime in all Fallout, all 3D Fallout, except for four, actually, I'd say, is unbearable because they decided really? they decided to have no sprint button. Like, I'm sorry, I hate to be oh, that God. guy, but having to walk through yeah. this gray wasteland is so boring. And that's mm-hmm. why one thing. Speaking that is, of yeah, Fallout Four, boring. speaking of Fallout Four, what do you think? Do you think that having a limited stamina for sprinting adds anything to no, any game? No, never. Absolutely never. Except for like Dark Souls yeah, or whatever. To some extent, because there's stamina around work, right? management there, right? But no, to pretty much any other game, no. Mm-hmm. Never. Yeah. It's just, why is the, what's the point of having limited sprint? Yeah, so this is I don't this is again the issue with Doom Eternal, where you're constantly sprinting in that game. You're constantly making yeah. <laughs> so, so now you give me a stamina bar from how long I can sprint? Are you joking? I'm gonna go play Doom Eternal. Literally. Like what do you yeah. want from me? Literally. <laughs> I think one of the reasons Doom Eternal works so well too is because uh, why it just doesn't. Uh, first of all, there's no reloading. Oh, great! Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't. I don't understand what reloading adds to anything <laughs> either. <laughs> I don't understand what it's all about. Like, adds. W- what's interesting is that it's all about like sort of resource management, right? But what's interesting about Doom Eternal is that it has so many. I know. I know. It, it has so many yeah. other resources where not needing to reload doesn't really actually affect much. Is what I'd say. D- Doom Eternal has actually engaging resource there we management, go. and not just oh, <laughs> let me let me stop shooting at things and reload now. Like oh, you're low on ammo. You're low on sword, ammo. Sword. Chop that guy in half. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Um, what did you have anything else to say um, about this topic? Pacing specifically? No, not really. Um, I feel like it's difficult um, to go on. Yeah, you go first. Speaking of resource management, what are your wow. thoughts on crafting in video games? I, f- I, I don't know. Hate I, I kind of don't mind crafting. I think it's kind of cool. I think it's kind of fun. I hate it. Well, you like, like survival games. Yeah, I sort of, of like... you like crafting. I feel like checklist type games are the flawless sort of podcast games. That's why I love Subnautica so much. Where y- Yahtzee, yeah. Yahtzee brought this up, right? Where crafting sort of feels like it's a shop, but there's just a lot of different currencies. I, <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> God damn no. It. <laughs> no, but the the thing that kills me about most crafting is that a lot of the time you have to just run around in a empty area collecting shit. Mm-hmm. I feel like crafting can be more engaging if you do different types of objectives in order to get the resource you need uh-huh. to craft something instead of just running around an open world and collecting flowers or some shit and to craft like a special bow or something see Mar- like, mark just lame to mark me. exclusively plays minecraft creative mode so i don't think we should really trust his opinion i don't play minecraft at all because i don't like minecraft. fucking piece of fuck ah disgusting yeah mm. i want to blame minecraft for the rise of these cancerous survival games that are just <laughs> everywhere i hate them i really don't like survival <laughs> games i've realized i've realized this after um playing spirit fairer which i really enjoyed uh-huh. but all the actual like crafting, like cooking thing, I'm just like, stop! Can this end? Oh mm-hmm. my god, this game would be like, this game would be twenty hours shorter if it didn't have any of that bullshit and it adds nothing to it. I don't know, man. Yeah. I love. I think it's especially well done in Subnautica. I don't know, man. I just, I just, I, this is like nothing. No one's really right here except for me. But this is just going down to what you enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> This just comes down to yeah. what you enjoy, and I actually really enjoy the grind of collecting resources. If you pop on a podcast and you swim in the ocean and you try to collect I, some fucking copper, it's it's a nice time. I enjoy 
grind in certain games too, but I feel like going to an area and clicking on something isn't engaging. Interesting. How? I'm like joking. Going, I'm... Go, like, just going somewhere, clicking on a flower, bam, you got a flower now. You need 20 more of those to construct this. That's just so boring to me. I really like, I don't know, I really like sort of, how do I put this, like self-sustain, the ability to obtain self self-sustainability in games, where uh, you reach a point where you don't actually have to go out and hunt for food, your farm is good enough that, that it can feed you. It's actually, um, yeah. it's, Subnautica actually lost a lot of its charm for me when I actually was able to obtain uh, self-sustainability, I didn't actually have to go and hunt it for shit. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, th that's when I decided to end the cause... game. Yeah, because the whole point is you're trying to reach there. And then when you reach there, you're like, oh, yeah. what now? Yeah, which mm -hmm. is very interesting yeah. because XCOM 2 is the same thing where you reach the state of being overpowered super soldier, mm -hmm. right? At the end of XCOM 2. And that was like... Yeah, it was awesome for one mission. I'm mm. sure if it lasted longer than one mission, it would have been lame as Yeah. <laughs> even though you worked for 30 hours to achieve that goal, and mm -hmm. then when you get to that goal, you... Like, the game knows you don't actually want it. Yeah. You, know, you wanted the progress of getting there. Yeah. yeah it's, it's not about... It's yeah, it's, really, it's not about the... It's not about the end, it's about the journey, you know? Something like that. Mm -hmm. Where the journey is often yeah, the most exactly. fun part of it. Yeah, yeah that's exactly correct. Yeah. Uh, do you want to go on to the next topic? Yeah, I feel like that's Which enough. Crafting okay. is interesting. I don't mind crafting as much, but yeah, that's that's all I have to I say. <laughs> yeah, I hate crafting. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's um, the next one? What about uh, video game graphics? What do you think of those? Uh, I don't know. Like, this is what just like I don't care for photorealism. Not fidelity. Yeah, like graphics. Oh, okay. Yeah. What do you mean, like in general? Me neither. I hate photorealism. Yeah, photorealism is fucking boring. Uh, that's why Last of Us sucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always yes. I've always it looks so yeah, boring despite it. having the best tech in the business. Like God of War four, I think yeah. did a really good job overall. Because, oh yeah, yeah because that game looks really good. Even though yeah, even though everybody looks semi realistic, Kratos, ah, beautiful man. Sorry, I got distracted by how beautiful <laughs> Kratos. Was. But yeah, that's sort of, <laughs> that's sort of the idea where the humans there look realistic, but also th th there's a really important term here, uh, stylized. Which I feel is very yeah. important in game graphics. Art style. Art style, exactly. Mm -hmm. So if you just make photorealism, there's no style there. It's just, oh, that's just a dude. Good for you. I think whenever I look at, at, at a Call of Duty game, I want to throw up. <laughs> that's a good I'm just thinking to myself, why is this a video game? Like, there's no reason for this to be anything, Boop. you know? It's just, I don't know if you noticed, you but I just killed realistic? that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Like Call of Duty is ironically one of the worst so, looking video uh, game franchises hideous. of all time. I have to agree. And it's just like it's all brown and gray mm -hmm. and realistic looking, and it's like, why? What's the point mm -hmm. of anything? What's the point of art if you're just gonna make it look like real life? I don't get right. it. No, uh, I, have to agree. I do. I do. I, I. I. do. Like I am. I am sometimes impressed with like actual fidelity in graphics, mm -hmm. like in God of War, for example, War, right? Yeah. Or Horizon Zero Dawn has really cool looking graphics, but th those games are carried by their art style mm -hmm. mixed in with the yeah, ex exactly. Thing. That's exactly yeah. what I was gonna bring up. Where there's sort of a bit of stylization there, but there's also a lot of photo. There's mm -hmm. also a bit of realism. Yeah, it's sort of the best of both worlds. Yeah. Oh, what's interesting? What are your favorite looking games? Okay, go ahead. I, no, no, yeah. So, you, so that's you, what you I was. I was actually. I was actually going to segue into that as well. Where we sort of have mm -hmm. three ends of the spectrum here. We have photorealism. We have photorealism mixed with stylization, and then we have pure stylization. Have full stylization. Yeah. yeah. A yeah. great example I want to bring up is actually Papers Please, mm -hmm. where the art style in that game is extremely unique to it, and no one actually looks like a yeah. human in that game. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it also looks kind of real. Yeah, at the same time, it's they weird. look human enough that you can identify with these blobs of color. Yeah. So he does a really good job there. That's another great example of uh, pure stylization, where there's no photorealism there at yeah. all, but it still happens. It still manages to look great. Yeah. Um, Bioshock Infinite, I think, is a is a mm -hmm. must for because that game that that game is like what almost a decade almost mm -hmm. a decade old at this point. Not almost. It came out like what 2014, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. Or something like and that. Elizabeth is still country. the most well-designed thing ever created. So, <laughs> <laughs> but like the cartoony art style mm -hmm. of that game, that game is not going to age. Yeah, that's a really good. It's just that's well, a really good it, way to put it as well. Is things that attempt photorealism look so fucking funny now. Like uh, a good example I can think of yeah. is Gears of War. Oh, oh games. that wasn't attempting photorealism. They, it just to an extent. Okay, my bad. <laughs> okay, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, but like you, yeah, you that look... doesn't look good. Uh, Bioshock Infinite isn't gonna age. Yeah, at all, at all. I agree. That's actually a really good COD point, already right? looks dated. Like COD from two years ago <laughs> already looks dated. Yeah, you know? there's nothing unique about it. There's no art style to look, to uh, look at. Speaking of multiplayer shooters, um, I think you know what I'm gonna bring up. Oh yeah, I think I, know. I think Overwatch is one of the best oh, looking games it. ever made. I think Overwatch is never gonna age like at all in terms of its visuals it's just it looks perfect like the art style in that game is perfect see okay i'm gonna bring up an even better <laughs> example right i think because this is uh, we're transitioning a bit early but we can transition to character design for a little bit because that's very mm -hmm. that's very closely tied to graphics now the first game to ever have good yeah. character design is mark knows what i'm about to bring up is team fortress 2 that is the first <laughs> sure. game to ever have good character <laughs> sure. design because what about mario or sonic that is a, what, what the fuck fuck off I mean, Back I know then. what you mean, but like in the in the multiplayer sense, I feel like that's in the know, multiplayer shooter yeah. sense. But yeah, probably the first most well designed game ever was, um, uh, yeah, Mario. I don't know, Team Fortress. Team 2. Fortress Two. <laughs> but well, because I actually I have something else to say about photorealism. Wow. Okay. Just briefly. Okay, go on. Uh, and uh, one of the reasons, like some of my one of, some of my favorite Resident Evil games, I think combine photorealism with mm -hmm. stylization, but not in an overt way like uh, God of War does. Mm -hmm. It's very like subtle stylization, but I think it works really well. You don't okay. know what I'm talking. I have about, no clue what he's talking about. Up. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Resident so, Evil Two is like is like photorealistic, but also stylized. Oh, it's, it's really cool. Thank you for that worthless bit of information, Mark. I appreciate it. I'm joking. That's me. <laughs> well, again, I'm gonna keep bringing up Yahtzee if we ever discuss video games because that mm -hmm. man is brilliant and he said basically yeah. every smart thing ever about video games already. Zero punctuation. Zero punctuation. Yeah, like the escapist Yahtzee from Zero Punctuation. Uh, he said that <laughs> in terms of multiplayer shooters, the most important thing is the, the enemy silhouette, so you can tell what you're dealing with yes. very instantly, very identifiably. And you look at TF TF2 from a mile away, you can instantly mm -hmm. tell every one of their uh, everything apart. It's it's really yeah, well for done sure. for that. And as much as I hate Overwatch, I do have to admit that they probably do a decent job. Right, Mark? Uh, to a lesser extent, because there's right. way more characters in Overwatch. But That's yes, true. you can also tell who they are from their silhouettes really well. Uh -huh. uh, meanwhile, for example, I can't describe to you the amount of times... what You, you know Warzone, the Call of Duty Battle Royale thing? I think so. I can't, des I can't describe to you the amount of times my friends and I have shot at each other mis <laughs> by mistake in that game because we don't you can't distinguish like your enemy from the grass or from your teammate or from anything so exactly and, yeah like, like you can't tell what the, what the hell is going on like like these are the limitations of photorealism is everyone just kind of looks like a dude right so why i love tf2 yeah. so much is that they completely threw realism out the window they just made these fucking abominations of human beings and they just <laughs> and they dressed them up in either bright red or bright blue so you can tell your teammates apart yeah, that's why that game like mm -hmm. it's definitely wasn't as huge as it was 15 years ago. But people still their servers are still relatively busy on that goddamn game because of shit like that because yeah. it's so easy to just pick up and sort of play. Also, yeah, I'm not gonna mention that. Go on. Yo, what were you gonna say? Well, what were you gonna say? Nothing. <laughs> what Miss Pauling? No, 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 no. <laughs> I was gonna say one of the main reasons TF2's age so well is, is is why it's uh, why it has so much longevity is they don't have a single female playable character. Oh, <laughs> I'm debating whether or not we should cut right, that out, yeah, but I'm just saying. <laughs> He's being sarcastic, guys. Ha, ha, like, totally uh, sarcastic. We're, we're, miso we're, we're misogynistic as a joke. Oh, of course, yes. exactly. <laughs> Man, you pushed me. Anyway, talk about Overwatch um, feet or whatever you wanted to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I think a game that has a really strong um, mix of like photorealism and uh, stylization is. Uh, have you seen what the characters look like in Final Fantasy VII Remake? Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> I've seen they what look Tifa like looks like anime characters, but it, yes, <laughs> <laughs> they look like anime characters, but they mm -hmm. also have like really realistic skin and hair and like teeth and everything, and somehow it works really well. I don't understand how they did yeah, it, no. but it looks beautiful. I actually kind of have it to agree. Really it looks great. I'm going to become another example of that, uh, Shenmue 3. <laughs> <laughs> like, you got to be. No, that's not a good example. <laughs> you got to They go for a very similar thing that Final Fantasy VII went for. Uh, yeah. They, where everyone yeah, looks I anime guess. but also looks semi realism. Although, to be fair, they probably ripped off Yakuza more. But. Final Fantasy VII is, like, one of the most, like, gorgeous looking worlds 
ever created, I think. Mm. And the characters are amazing. Like you look at their sprites for you look at their three D like polygon models from the ninety seven game and compare them to the current one. It's very close, but at the same time, the new ones look like actual real people, but also anime characters. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah, I, love it. I love the character design. Exactly. Game, they, yeah. they mesh photorealism with stylization, which is interesting because the original Final Fantasy was pure stylization. And I'd argue that well, the yeah, new ones... Eight bit, exactly. Right? And I'd argue the new ones probably look better. Mm-hmm. They do look way better. Yeah. So. And anybody that... Well, I think Seven is the only one with like a really, really cool, mm. distinct art style, which is why it's the most popular one. I, I, you, and people can say, "Oh, yeah, I like the story and characters more than the other ones." No, no, no. You like the character design and the world more than the other ones. Oh, wow! <laughs> like, I guarantee you, ninety percent of the attachment, like even my attachment to those characters, I think it just comes from how they look and sound and the world they exist in. I don't mm. think they're actually. I, I don't think the writing in Final Fantasy VII is strong enough. To carry it, I think the art design and the character design carries it. Yeah, and and yeah. Um, their fat globular tits, <laughs> <laughs> especially the that ones too. on Cloud. Which the, which they do? Yeah, which they do. <laughs> Stop! Oh my god! <laughs> Fuck! Oh. Okay. But yeah, there, there's a very fine balance between photorealism and stylization. Yeah. I think if you lean more into stylization, it's going to be more time. I have to agree. Looking. I fully agree with that. Yeah. Well, some of my favorite. I w- I'm only going to mention this briefly because I'm gonna. I can instantly imagine the sigh that Mark is going to let out as soon as I mention it. But Darkest Dungeon is one of my favorite. <laughs> is one of my favorite games ever. Mark, are you there? Yes. Okay, I was. I was unable to hear you for a second. I apologize. But yeah, uh, yeah Mark. Yeah, dis- my, my Mark. Controller. Yeah, Mark disagrees with me here. He doesn't love the way a Darkest Dungeon looks. I fucking love it. I think they they lean into stylization extremely well. And the art, mm-hmm. the, just the general art style of the game is just gorgeous, in my opinion. I think they did a really good job, because yeah, yeah that's all. You know, you know what's on a similar plane that I really like how it looks. Wolf Among Us. Oh, that's a really good. <laughs> <laughs> Wolf Among Us looks really good. It looks yeah. like a comic book, but I, also oh. like a. It has like three D models. It's it's the, one of the only examples of three D models with like cell shading that look mm-hmm. really good. Because I don't think Borderlands looks that good, honestly. Or honestly, The I Walking Dead Wolf probably looks look better good. than Borderlands, but Wolf Among Us really perfected it, in my opinion. I think Wolf Among Us looks looks amazing. Looks much I think Walking Dead doesn't really need that comic book art style. I think it kind of goes for uh-huh. like a brown, like gray kind of yeah, look. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, but I feel like Wolf Among Us really shines because of its art style. And also That's because a great game. Big B, should play Big B yeah. is very attractive. Me and Mark are both straight Big men, B's. right? But we've admitted yeah. we've admitted that Big B Big B Wolf is 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 very. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Whew. I'm getting all hot yeah, and bothered now. I was going to open the window. <laughs> I just want to briefly list mm. games with art styles I really love. You alright? Okay. Uh, Bioshock Infinite. Good. Final Fantasy VII Remake. Ew. Uh, Resident Evil Two, mm-hmm. uh, Overwatch, gross, and um, The Wolf Among Us. Yeah, those okay. are like the main ones. That's I really think. good. Okay, there's one more brief thing I wanted to bring up. I've realized we're br- we brought up Doom in like every single category, and we're gonna we're about to do it again. Where, <laughs> for yeah. example, Doom uh 2016 had this pretty big issue where bringing a lot of the stylized sprites of the original Doom games to 3D, they had a lot of issues to deal with. And I feel like a mm-hmm. lot of the time they sort of resorted to give them a vague skull face. Yeah. Where, uh, as much as yeah. I love 2016, a lot of the demons look, their faces looked a little samey and they didn't really allow for any expression. And with Doom Eternal, they leaned a lot more towards the more cartoony side. Yeah. Right? Like, there's a lot of little things that you can do, for example, is in Doom 2016, in Doom Eternal, that you couldn't in Doom 2016. For example,. Uh, launching a grenade into Kakademon's mouth, he gulps it for a second, <laughs> yeah. it explodes, and it's, mm-hmm. it's so fucking it's good. Little things like that are incredible. Like, yeah, and like, you're about, you, like, there's this one finishing move where you can stab a Hell Knight through the, through the head, and he looks right into your eyes mm-hmm. as, as you're doing it. And it's yeah. just like, oh god, I'm watching this thing die. So stuff like that, where... At the same time, mm-hmm. though, yeah, at the same time, though, I think I prefer how 2016 looked Ooh, over Eternal. okay. I think I think Eternal looks very garish and early two thousands. Mm-hmm. Um, I do appreciate how there it's a lot more cartoony, but I just I don't think they pulled off the cartoony look super well. Okay. I think twenty sixteen had a twenty sixteen had a very coherent mm. like 
color palette and look to it the whole time. Meanwhile, Doom Eternal, some levels feel like you're playing a different game. It's relatively divisive, yeah, weirdly enough, the more cartoonization style. I personally like it, but I, yeah, I fully agree that it does sort of remove a bit of focus from the art style as well. What's the what's the fat enemy name? Um, the Mancubus? Yeah, I think the Mancubus in the 2016 look way better than I have Doom to, Eternal. I have to agree with that as well, yeah. Yeah, I do not like uh, the way they looked in Eternal. But I see what they were going for, mm -hmm. though. I like the animations on the... I think... Yeah. Um, if we want to briefly talk about enemy design... Okay, uh, in general, I think I think Doom Eternal and Doom are the only games where that with superb enemy design. I think huh. every other game I've played is just kind of fodder, fodder there for you to kill. Mm -hmm. You know? Even Resident Evil. But... But... Mm, yeah. Oh wow. Okay. But but Doom Doom turn actually no the enemy design in Resident Evil Four specifically it. is brilliant. I fucking called it. But what's funny is that is that in that game, the enemies are designed around how the game controls. Mm -hmm. So every enemy like will like slow down as they approach you so that you can actually like aim at them and shoot them in the head instead of running at you, which wouldn't make sense of that game's extremely slow control scheme. Right. That's actually sort of interesting. But I get it. In Doom Eternal, I feel like the enemies actually dictate the player around the yes. line instead of the other way around. Such and a good, yeah. the other way around, like if if the player is let's, it's just given cannon fodder essentially. That just becomes really boring quickly. Mm, exactly. And another thing, mm -hmm. what, what's really interesting about we're, we we should just name this episode Doom Eternal and why it's good. <laughs> Doom Eternal just <laughs> succeeds on so many fronts, so I keep bringing it up. But, like, there are little things that it, that it allows itself to do with its enemy design, right? The best example, you probably know what I'm about to bring up as well, but, like, the way that you, you're able to shoot off pieces of flesh off of the enemy, and it sort of helps you gauge yeah. how, much hel how much damage you actually dealt to them. Uh, that's really cool. I've never seen any other game really do something like that. But that's more the actual visual design so, of the enemy. I was talking more about how they attack and move and stuff mm -hmm. like that, because every enemy in Doom Eternal and Doom has a different role on the battlefield, mm -hmm. and you deal with all of them in different yeah, ways. Yeah, that's a good point. Which I think makes it a much more dynamic shooter mm -hmm. than if you were just shooting random shit that yep. was coming at you, you know? Like shooting people in an airport, yeah. A what? <laughs> like, call <of> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because in COD, you just shoot guys that pop out of yeah. cover, you know? It's really lame. But in Doom Eternal, you have to, like, change your tactics mm -hmm. per enemy. Yeah. It's insane. It's great. It's great. So good. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, so, wait, what <laughs> were we just... Dis yeah, we were just discussing graphics and shit, stylization, photorealism, yeah. uh, character design as um, well. You didn't mention. Do you want to go over some games that you think have really nice graphics that you like? Uh, yes, that's a good That's a good call. Uh, Doom Eternal is one of them. Mm -hmm. I do have to agree. Uh, even though, even though I think yeah. that yeah, I do really like I do really enjoy what it was able to do with his graphics. I don't think it looks flawless, and I do agree that there it, mm -hmm. what it what it, it took one step forward, two steps back a, a, to some extent from Doom Twenty Six. I still like the color palette. Yeah, I, fucking this guy with his color palettes. I swear to God, that's what? part of that's like half God. the graphics. What do you mean? God, I hate him. Are you colorblind? <laughs> Darkest Dungeon, I think, looks incredible. <laughs> I can just sit around and stare at that game a lot. Uh, I think that what mm -hmm. what uh, Papers Please does with its limitations, I think they did a really good job. And uh, I'm also going to bring up Hollow Knight, although Mark might disagree with me there. I think that yeah, yeah Mark is going to disagree with that. I think it's a really it's cute Tumblr bug. Bait. It is Tumblr bait, but hey, man, Tumblr has some good artists. So eat my dick. <laughs> it does. And yeah, um, oh yeah. yeah. Although yeah, we should make an episode. I want to quickly Hollow shout out an indie game. I really love. Wow. Uh, it's called Bark of the Ninja. It's like oh, a, good example. It looks like a Cartoon Network show, mm -hmm. but it's like a 2D stealth game. It's awesome. I love that uh, game. He it looks really good. He sure played it with me. It yeah. looks like the... Neat. Yeah, it looks really good, I think. That game looks amazing. Yeah. I didn't really prepare a list, but yeah, just Darkest Dungeon, I'd probably say Reign Supreme is one of my favorites. I just really love the way the game looks. Yeah. Able to sort of uh, communicate yeah. a lot of despair without any actual dialogue. <laughs> what? <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, that's true. Yeah, all right. Yeah. I think the way Kojima games oh, look as unique, despite them being mostly photorealistic. I don't know how he does it. Unique is certainly a word, yeah. Yeah, it's mm. certainly a word. Certainly a word. <laughs> that sounded that that sounded like a like a Yahtzee moment <laughs> on a podcast right there. What you just said. Nice. I, I, I unique is certainly a word. I'm definitely the Yahtzee of this, by the way. Just so we just so that's clear. Sure. So. <laughs> 
But yeah, um, I <coughs> do think... Okay, I, I want to bring up a game we both really like, <coughs> but I don't think it has a great art style. Okay. Um, uh, Spider-Man? Mm, yeah. Okay, go on. I think Spider-Man, Spider-Man, I think, is really bland looking, like mm-hmm. the PS4 game. Yeah. Because it's it wants to be comic booky, but at the same time, it wants to be realistic looking. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't think the mesh quite works, and I'm not a huge fan of that. I do have to agree with that. Yeah, it looks... Oddly, yeah. it looks oddly over polished, but also unfinished in places. Yeah. I can't really explain it. it. It just yes, parts of it just yeah. look off. It's like not quite like real life, but also not quite cartoony enough. And the way they design Miles, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with Miles's face, but like people don't look like that. <laughs> he, he looks much better um, in Miles Morales. Mark, no, he looks much better in the Miles Morales <laughs> one. Like I'm serious, no. There's something about his face Does just he? looks off. Yeah, he looks, but his face looks better than Miles Morales. I'm not sure what they did, but they 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 fixed it. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I think he just got a haircut from Miles Morales. Ah, uh, there we go. <laughs> See, maybe that was the issue. Maybe it was his bum ass haircut. Yeah. That game. That that game sucks. <laughs> that, game that was a game sucks. I explicitly let Mark buy at full price so, to to let me know if it was good. <laughs> oh, well, my brother really wanted to play it, ah, okay. and he beat it in a day in one sitting. That makes sense. So. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. uh... Not a great art style. Mm-hmm. Also, um, I want to bring up The Last of Us. Mm-hmm. I think that game looks extremely Disgusting. bland. I think Naughty Dog consistently has every resource a studio would ever need, and their <laughs> games always look so boring. Yeah, I have to agree. Like, uh, Uncharted has no art direction whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Um, neither does The Last of Us. They, just, they, yeah, they fall just, under scruffy very, white things so often. It's just, it's just lame. Yeah, it's not. It's not even just the character design. It's just like the environments in general. Yeah. Like you could make such a more, like again, I'm gonna bring up Resident Evil, also mm-hmm. a zombie game, right? With uh, over the shoulder camera and you shoot zombies in the head. Uh, right. Resident Evil has has much cooler art direction and a much more interesting art style than Last of Us does. And I think it's just because it came from Japan and they're crazy over there. <laughs> that's, that's a very fair <laughs> point. Yeah. <laughs> but like Resident Evil Two remake looks photorealistic but at the same time it has very distinct like architecture design and and character design and everything Mm -hmm. last of us i think looks photorealistic and is also just like boring looking like it just doesn't look interesting at all yeah no i can definitely i I can't even put my finger on it somewhat something in the resident evil games looks very distinct to me even though it doesn't have like a very very like overt art style to it i think i think i don't know what a lot of it could be is the fact that it sucks shit and should die well, other games aren't necessarily <laughs> like. <laughs> but what's okay? This is interesting. You just bring up Spider Man, right? And there were two mm-hmm. instances where I played a game at Mark's house for like a solid five minutes, and I said, "Yeah, I'm paying like basically full price for this." Mm-hmm. First instance was Spider Man mm-hmm. PS4, and the other was Crash Bandicoot 4. And it's mm-hmm. interesting because in terms of art style, I think that game really succeeds in what it's trying to do. Oh yeah, yeah. Crash Bandicoot 4 is also one of the best looking and best yeah. animated Absolutely, games I've seen. Yeah. Like even little, and it's things. not gonna age. Yeah, I ag- agreed. Like, y- y- mm-hmm. y- like there's this little thing at the very end of each level where you can, you can choose mm-hmm. to continue or replay the level, and there's a little animation he does. He's all like, "Yeah, which you want to continue?" And he's like, "Eh, whatever." When you want to <laughs> replay and stuff like yeah. that, there's like little things like that. Yeah, so, that's actually another bullet point I had: oh, animation nice. in video games. Wow. What I think we are on top of the these ma- transitions, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think the main thing that actually attracted me to play Overwatch is the animation. It's mm-hmm. just the animation in that game is like amazing, and every you know everything you need to know about a character without even hearing them speak or reading their Interesting. lore. Interesting. Yeah, wow. it's just like it's so well animated. It looks like a Disney movie mm-hmm. minus the over animation that they do all the time. Mm-hmm. And Crash Bandicoot Four also has really good animation. It does. It looks, it looks like an actual animated yeah. film. In the, in the cutscenes. Like Ratchet and Clank. Insane. Didn't they just use actual footage from the Ratchet and Clank movie? Yeah, yeah, and they also use the CGI asset from the movie. That's pretty good. <laughs> For Clank, which is pretty great. That's yeah. pretty good. I think animations are very important in a game to define characters and uh, make cutscenes engaging mm-hmm. instead of just... You know what one of my main pet peeves in games? Mm-hmm. Like, if you have an RPG, for example, and there's a big world and you go talk to a bunch of NPCs mm-hmm. or whatever, right? And then you talk to an NPC and the camera is like... It's still the same camera as when you were walking around and you can move it around and stuff, but you're locked in place and you're speaking. To oh, that is so it's the most weird. Boring shit ever. Yeah. It's the most boring shit ever. I would much prefer like a, even if it's like a shot reverse shot, right? Uh huh. Interesting. Like they didn't fall yeah, out floor. Like, uh, 
The Witcher Three, they had like a whole thing. <gasps> they had a computer. They had a computer algorithm that would like set oh, a that's scene interesting. with lights and stuff, huh. and it would like it would automatically cut between characters when they spoke lines and stuff, so that it's not just boring shit in an open world. You know, I'm actually so it's like more. It's like every conversation is a cutscene. It's mm-hmm. great. I'm glad you bring up The Witcher Three because like I'm gonna consistently talk shit on Witcher Three just because it's one of Mark's favorite games. But it's just, it's also a shining example of... You've played it for 15 minutes. It's, it's just a shining example of the game that I'm assured has an incredible narrative. And I believe you. I believe that it has a really good narrative. I'm just but not going to play it I yet. cannot stomach the gameplay at all. It's just the epitome of that. Where I'm sure the narrative is incredible, I'm just never going to be able to see it. You... Do the gameplay for maybe 20% of the game. Yeah. And the, the 80% of it is just the narrative. And that 20% so that I wasn't able to sit through. I don't so, see what the problem is. Uh, eat my dick and die. Well, the game, the the gameplay is like they 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 throw you into a combat encounter at the very beginning of the game, and then you like, you don't have to do combat for like another three hours. Yeah, and <laughs> so, the narrative wasn't even that good, so it couldn't let me get through the three hours. So. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's an interesting point. Uh, because I I actually I agree with you. I don't think the wow. narrative in The Witcher Three is that great. I think the characters, oh, and the sub stories are great. Okay. Got it. So you're more of like the side I think quest. The characters that. are. So Character, not 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 even the side quest. Like the, you have the grand overarching narrative where you want to defeat these bad guys or whatever. Mm-hmm. But within that, you have smaller narratives with characters that you're like recruiting to help mm-hmm. you with it, right? Um, and I think that's a much stronger way to approach narrative. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, sorry, I'm going to bring up Mass Effect again. Mass Effect One, right? Entirely plot focused. Uh, you don't get to know anything about any of the characters beyond a few lines of dialogue, and the plot is really good. I think the plot in the first Mass Effect is pretty good. Okay. Uh, it's just I wasn't like engaged in it. Mm-hmm. Second game, second Mass Effect, right? You're given the most like vague plot description at the beginning, and then the rest of the game is you recruiting a bunch of really interesting characters and doing shit for them, like doing their side quests. Wow, that sounds incredible. And there's barely any plot. Oh, that sounds awesome. And that worked so much better because because characters are way more important than plot. Right? Yeah, this is something. Yeah, I was also gonna bring this up where uh, this isn't just a game specific thing, right? Where I feel like characters are able to carry pretty much any medium. Where a mediocre mm-hmm. a mediocre plot is able to be carried by the characters. I'd say a lot of the exactly. time. Exactly. Yeah. You you can't carry a, a mediocre characters by a plot. Yeah. Exactly. Because if you don't give you a shit, because ex- if you don't give a shit about these people, why would you care about what happens mm-hmm. to them? But if you give a shit about these people, yeah. even if what happens to them isn't all that impressive, you're like, good for them, at <laughs> the very least, you know? Yeah. So th- there's that Witcher aspect. Witcher 3, of it. One, of my, one of my favorite games of all time. I think the actual overarching narrative where you defeat the Wild Hunt or whatever mm-hmm. is really weak. Mm-hmm. But the characters that make up that narrative and their little sub-narratives within that bigger narrative are what really make the game like shine, mm-hmm. in my opinion. I, just, I love bringing this up as an example. I think, oh, go on, you go first. Yeah. I think if you sum up most plots... It's just be like, oh, okay, yeah, they go over here, and they, they fight bad guy, bad yeah. guy escapes, they go over here to fight bad guy again, and they defeat the bad yeah, the, guy, the, bam, that's most plot. There's only so much you can do with plot, exactly. There's a, so much more you can do with character, which is why the uh, character is mm-hmm. able to carry so much more. Yeah, exactly. But What I love bringing up as an example of what does this extremely horribly is, uh, this isn't a game, actually, but so I'm cheating a little bit, but it's actually the Walking Dead series. It's an anime? No, oh, that's oh, a good okay. example to where there isn't a single character you root for, except for like Shane, maybe. <laughs> oh yeah, so, Shane's great. So but thing, only because John Bernthal. Is there great. we go. Exactly. So y- you're not invested in watching these people try to survive at all. You just kind of hope everyone dies. Actually, you know why? Mm-hmm. You know why? I've actually been pondering this a lot. Wow, it's okay. Because nobody in The Walking Dead has any character beyond mm-hmm. just I am person whose normal life was lost and I care about my family. I care about I my f- family. fucking Christ. I hate when people care about their family. Fuck your family. You're boring. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay when people care when people care when characters Disgusting. like motivation is caring about their family, but that can't be the only thing about your character. Okay. You know what I mean? Like what's what's literally anybody's character on The Walking Dead? No, no there's none. Like Daryl's character is that he has a crossbow and a motorcycle. Oh, There's nothing else to him. And the actor who plays him is good. And that's he names it. the kid it's little like ass kicker. That's, that's when I stopped watching the show. That's actually when I stopped watching the show. <laughs> is, they named the baby... Oh, fuck. Go on. I'm sorry. Go on. Who are the... Who, who is the best character on The Walking Dead? Probably the governor, right? Probably the governor. Yeah, that's because 
because he has an actual character. Yeah. Like, he has actual motivations. Yeah. He's sinister. You know, he's interesting. Mm -hmm. He has an eye Meanwhile, patch. all the characters on, on the good guy's side, what's their character? Let's see. Rick, he you cares about his have, family. Yeah, you just... can't just have a person. You know what I mean? You can't just have yeah, a Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Like, it's just... Like, this is just some dude. Just Why should I give a shit about what happens to him? <laughs> it's like, I'm watching fiction. I'm watching yeah. something more interesting than exactly. real life, right? Not just some guy. <laughs> like, like y Yats I'm, I'm going to bring up Yatsu yeah. one more time. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 what, what's, what he brings up is very interesting about storytelling is, um, is this the most interesting part in this person's life? And if it isn't, why aren't we seeing that? Yeah. Where I'm, that doesn't necessarily sure. apply, but that's just a cool bit that he said. Yeah. It's like writing one on one. Yeah, that's all. So okay, Even we went then, on. The, I, I like on? I like just I like just hanging out with interesting people He's, in video games. That's why he likes Mass Effect. I don't even need so to be doing anything. anything. Yeah, that's you know? a good point. Um Yeah, like uh Um yeah, whatever. I'm mm -hmm. not gonna bring it up again. <laughs> 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 yeah, we went a little tangent about the Walking Dead. Walking Dead sucks, that's all. Uh characters are extremely Walking important. Walking Dead sucks, yeah. yeah. Characters are extremely characters are important. way more important than plot. Mm. If you think if you think plot is more important to characters, uh, let me just tell you, no, you you're don't. You're just wrong. You really you're don't. Just, you're just you're you're just <laughs> you're confused. You're confused about what plot is. <laughs> you know, a plot is a catalyst to get a bunch of characters to get, to it's, interact that's so, and do stuff. That's the best way to put it. I'm sorry, I'm very impressed with how you worded that. Again, version. Mass Effect One, easily the best plot out of the whole trilogy. Mm -hmm. Easily the worst game out of the whole trilogy. <laughs> 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 you know? It's like you can't just be care. Like that game tries to just write its like admittedly interesting plot right, throughout yeah. the whole thing and it's just it's it's boring and the second game has no plot and a lot of interesting characters yeah and, and it's much better that way and one thing that i'm gonna bring up is honestly like let's look at bioshock infinite's plot real quick mm -hmm. um you're just kind of i think it's a really good plot it's though. a really good plot the better but at the same time i really feel mm -hmm. like it's carried by how much you want to see booker succeed and how much you love elizabeth exactly so exactly. yeah it, yeah and even like, even though that's what's interesting about Bioshock Infinite is it easily has. Okay, let's not count Bioshock Two because we don't count that one. But out of Bioshock Infinite mm -hmm. and Bioshock One, the villain is really lame. It's just because like Andrew yeah, Ryan has villain. has has a sexy mustache. He has a cool voice. He, yeah. he has a real way to appropriate himself. And then the race, the the sorry, the the bad guy in Bioshock Infinite is just kind of racist, and that's kind of it. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, he's really lame, but at the mm -hmm. same time, it, uh, yeah, he's not like a focal point of exactly. the game. They know what like they the did. The first yeah. Bioshock is mm -hmm. the first exactly. Bioshock. Andrew Ryan is really the whole like yeah focal point mm -hmm. of the plot, right? Right. So then, when he gets replaced by Atlas, Fuck. it's much mm. more lame. Oh, would you kindly suck <laughs> right? me, cock and balls? Like no, <laughs> that's the thing. I don't understand the. What are some games gone with your favorite plot? Yeah. Um, yeah, honestly, Fallout New Vegas. I want to say is definitely up there. I really feel like the main story is really impre really cool. A lot of the side quests mm -hmm. are really cool, and the way that you actually can affect the plot is really interesting, depending on which faction you go with. Yeah. Even though I feel like the ending itself is a bit underdeveloped, because all that really changes is the ending slideshow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I really think that they did they a really good job with that. They ran out of time. They ran out of time and money. The fucking 18 months. Yeah, anyway. Bashik Infinite as well. I'm sure you're going to bring that up as well. You know... Mass Effect Andromeda was put together in 13 months. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That, yeah, that, right. It shows. They had, like, no direction. And they're like, wait, hold on. The, wait, the release date's coming. Fuck. All no, right. <laughs> well, it shows. We're, we're going to make the game now. <laughs> I actually, that's an interesting thing about modern Bioware, which is like that company that makes those games, mm -hmm. right? It's, I think they, they came up with something really good, like one time for Dragon Age or something. They made that game in like a year or something. Oh, nice. And then ever since, they're like, all the execs are just like, oh yeah, just work your Bioware magic, and they just crunch in like the last <laughs> year, and they put out like garbage. Like nice. Anthem was crunched in like the last year. That's nice. just what they do now. They're like, oh yeah, just work, just work your magic just that work. you did that long time ago, and it's like that's no, that's not how it works. Yeah, to try to recapture lightning in the bottle, I guess. Mm hmm. And even then, it's not a good way to work. Yeah, you know, not it's at not all. A good no. way to cram everything into the last twelve months. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Imagine not. making a whole ass AAA video game RPG in thirteen months. I ca I cannot. I cannot. No. That's one thing about indie games. Is indie devs have no sort of. It's sort of a double edged sword here, and where indie devs they have no like uh, expected release date. Time they constraints. Time constraints. But at the same time, mm. you look at shit like Yandere Dev, right? No Man's Sky. Or no Man's Sky is another no good Man's example. Sky. God. 
or um, the yeah. Binding of Isaac. Holy shit! Like as much as I'm loving the Binding of Isaac right now, Repentance was delayed like seven times. And I, 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 I yeah, which is fine. Yeah, exactly. I'm not someone to complain about uh, delays. If you, if you're really working on the best thing possible, then delay as many times as you want. It's just interesting because most AAA titles wouldn't be be able to delay seven times. That's just a distinction. You know I what to I think? Um, from the outside, what what if what which big company has a good like? Well, except for like Naughty Dog, has a good uh, sort of. Uh, like I think Sony has a good uh, understanding of this kind of thing because mm. I think, like that that new God of War game, right? The God of War Four, right? It's so polished yep. and perfect yep. in every way. Mm -hmm. You feel like you feel like they just let them just work for however long they yep. want it, and then they release the game. It took like five years to make. Mm -hmm. It literally uh, that game took it. like five years to make, and yep. it's, it's the most polished, perfect thing ever. <laughs> same thing with the uh, Spider Man. Same thing with Ratchet and Clank. Right? Every all of those. Like it's just it's so polished, right. and you don't feel like. Even as I was playing Mass Effect Three, I can like I'm like I can tell you were you were rushing this, you know, hmm. towards the end. Meanwhile, like Spider Man and God of War and even like Ghost of Tsushima, and I'm like I can tell you had all the time you needed for this. Yeah, like again, <laughs> and it made a much better product. Like I'm gonna bring up the Binding of Isaac Repentance again because it was a DLC that was announced in 2018, and it came out in 2021, and it was more incredible yeah. than I could have possibly imagined. So, good job. Exactly. Take your time, guys. Just, just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Just wait. Yeah, uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake, I think, <laughs> was in like, development for like eight years or some shit. Wow. <laughs> and since Square Enix has all the money in the world, they're just like, yeah, just... I th you know what I think? You know what's funny? You know how that game came to be? I think it was a tech demo for the PS3. <laughs> and then people were like, wait, we, we want this. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> we actually want this. So then they're like, all right, we'll release it on the PS3. And then it came at the end of the PS4's life, life cycle. Okay, so I'm going to actually... <laughs> I'm actually going to show us an opposite end of the spectrum here. Where uh, something that actually really struggled from long, really long development time. Uh, Duke Nukem mm -hmm. Forever. I'm not saying it can't be done, yeah. So, something that struggled Hello? from... Uh, Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can. So, I'm, I'm not saying you can't be bogged down by super long development, yeah. But yeah, yeah, is uh, Duke Nukem Forever. <laughs> this is the best example I can think of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because... Well, that was development hell. Yeah. That wasn't development. No, I know what you mean. Oh, that's a fair point. But at the same time, the fact that it that's lasted... That's pre-production. The, the fact that production mm -hmm. lasted, like, ten years, it, it, it sort of forced mm -hmm. itself to adapt to whatever, like, the future of whatever gaming was actually doing at those at the time. Yeah. So that's why it's such a mess. Cuz like, I'm I'm going to say this I said this before and I'm going to say it again. Duke Nukem Forever had the potential to be the greatest game of all time. <laughs> because if we had something that was as polished as in gameplay wise as Doom 2016 or, or Doom Eternal but had your mom jokes, what the fuck else could you want from a video game? <laughs> <laughs> like explain to me that's the flawless yeah. game that's perfect yeah 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 uh mm. i think something that's similar to that is uh cyberpunk 2077 mm. oh interesting. because for for some godforsaken reason they announced it in 2012 <laughs> right right they did like a cinematic trailer and then at the end it said coming when it's ready which is hilarious because they released it before it was ready mm -hmm. um and I think because it was announced in 2012, I kind of bought into this as well, but I also really enjoyed the game, so I didn't really care. Um, I think people bought into the fact that it was like like eight years in development or some shit. When it really mm. wasn't, it was in development for like four years. Uh, I see. Uh, Even though it was they, just, they just decided to announce it in like 2012 or some shit. So people just bought into the hype and because, because it was such a long time coming, mm -hmm. right? So um, yeah, I just... One of, the, one of the things I hate about preferring games over other over yeah. any other method of storytelling is you gotta wait like four years for something to come out every time i mean that's also why like, so yeah exactly i know what you mean continue I, as soon as i finish god of war the new one i'm like oh my god i really want to play this whole uh. trilogy. <laughs> i will be 30 yes. by the time that whole trilogy comes out <laughs> i will be 30 years my old. god that wow that really puts it into perspective <laughs> yeah good point but yeah. at the same time this is also why they're the best storytelling medium the because mm. they're so difficult to make, because they're so multidimensional, because there's so much you can do with them, is why they're able to succeed where no other medium can. But at the same time, it takes them four years to make something like that. Yeah, exactly. And then it comes out and it might be shit. Who knows? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Okay, we're we're a bit off topic. Let's go yeah, to. No, we're still discussing video yeah, games. I guess. Yeah. yeah. 
I guess I guess we went over all my points. Did you have anything else to say about um, specific games or specific points? Yeah, Witcher Three sucks. <laughs> no, How but important I'm do you think uh, dialogue is in a game? Oh, extremely. Oh, okay. I have to put this. Yeah. yeah, it depends. If it's trying to go for a narrative, if its dialogue is bad, I will not be able to take anything seriously. I always. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I I have see. To. Go on. So you see. No. So, <laughs> See, I'd agree with that if, again, Final Fantasy VII oh Remake didn't exist. <laughs> because on my second playthrough, I was like, I love the story, I love the characters, I love the world. But on my second playthrough, I'm like, oh my god, this dialogue is really bad. <laughs> is that the this village? This dialogue is like the most anime tier trash Is that the ever. village up ahead? <gasps> no. Yes! <laughs> That's <laughs> Shenmue. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, it's it's the same thing, I'm telling you. Yeah. But okay, So for some fair. reason, I, I'm just... I'm just able to overlook kind of like cringy dialogue mm-hmm. in that game specifically. But yeah, dialogue is important. I also want to briefly bring up how important I think banter is in outside of cutscenes. <laughs> outside of because media? I noticed this I noticed this while playing. <laughs> I noticed this while replaying the new God of War. Mm-hmm. Oh like, yeah. Oh my god, I'm lo- th- this it flows so mm-hmm. well because they're literally talking all the time. Yeah. And it's not just you're waiting for a cutscene for something to be said or to happen. You f- it feels like everything you're doing has a purpose to it. Because, again, it's like the characters in the world are reacting to what you're doing. And it's not just get from point A to point B for a cutscene like The Last of Us. No, I fully agree with that. Right? It's actually... It works w- what it, what it really does it well is... Flow. Yeah, I fully agree with that. That's an incredible example. Because getting from point A to point B in that game is such a joy... Because uh, you have you have yeah. the torn off head dude telling stories, and it's some of my favorite parts in the entire game. Yeah, honestly, mm-hmm. where where you just like you're just like I'm on just a boat. Like, yeah, yeah, you're just like on a boat, and your son's like, well, well, what about Odin? And the guy goes, well, see, the thing about Odin is he was a weak hunt, and then he tells <laughs> yeah. a story about how, why he was a weak hunt, and it's very interesting all the time. <laughs> and because his dialogue think, is so great, and his voice acting, it's another yeah. thing. Voice acting is really important. Exactly. I keep cutting you off. I'm sorry. Go on. No, it's okay. It's okay. I think okay. I think God of War ties its story so well with its gameplay yep. because the mm-hmm. characters are constantly talking exactly. and yep. story isn't just reserved for cutscene. Mm-hmm. You know, story is being told the whole time in that game, which is why it's such a joy to play, even though it's like twenty five hours mm-hmm. long. Um, and it's not again. It's not like like in some games i'm just like waiting for the gameplay to be finished so i can experience the story but in god of war you can't really skip you can't skip cutscene to cutscene and, and because get the, the same cutscenes of the game exactly that's yeah. not how it works yeah exactly yeah because the cutscene cutscene's the whole game because they're talking while you're also mm-hmm. doing shit i love it I, I noticed that in that game specifically i think more games should do it i actually the first place that i yeah. actually noticed they did something like that was actually when we're gonna bring it up again bioshock infinite where uh, there's no actual mm-hmm. cutscenes yes, in yep. that game, you're just sort of playing, but at the same time your character's talking, mm. right? Like for example, you're like taking yeah. you're like taking a little boat ride, and Elizabeth is like, "Oh, my father's a bitch," and yeah, and you have complete <laughs> control of your character in this while your character's talking, and you can like sit around and yeah. you can teabag Elizabeth if you want. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> I think that that's actually at a really good way. At the same time, though, go on. Mm-hmm. I think Bioshock Infinite does it really well, but I also think that's a slippery slope because. If mm-hmm. you, if instead of a cutscene, you just have you standing there and another character talking to you, it could get really boring. I oh know. yeah, that's different. Like I really feel like the um, the choice of maintaining control of your character is really important in in Infinite. But Bioshock Infinite is brilliant, and one of the ways it's brilliant is because it somehow feels cinematic despite mm. not taking control away from you. Yeah, that's a really good way to you put know it. What Holy I mean? shit. It, Meanwhile, something like, um, I haven't played it yet, but there's this game called Metro Exodus that I watched the review mm-hmm. on, right? Where the, like, the cutscenes are, like, like five minutes long, and it's just characters talking to each other while you're just statically standing in place. Like, there's no cinematic camera work or anything, you know? You don't well, say right. anything, because you have a silent protagonist, and I'm just like, this sounds painful. It's like, I'm here too, guys. And somehow... some Somehow Bioshock Infinite does it much better, mm-hmm. even though it, it, you do retain... Your character. I don't know how it does that. Yeah, no, they did a really good, good job of that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All I, right. Uh, I think that's about to say pretty much everything I wanted to bring up. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, if there's yeah, uh, the one takeaway from this is play Doom Eternal if you haven't already. That's the one thing to keep in mind. <laughs> and Resident Evil Four. No, no, don't play that one. 
play Resident Evil 4. No, uh, no. <laughs> my sum up is, I think, na like, narrative and characters are the most important thing in a game to me, even though gameplay is technically what the medium is. I right. just, I don't know. I don't know how it, somehow the gameplay enhances my narrative experience, but I don't care too much about the gameplay. God, he's a disgusting human. I don't being, know how my why. brain works like that. And yeah, yeah. And what I would say, I always view gameplay as the most important, and I think that if a if a game doesn't tie gameplay to narrative well enough, it's just it just fails in what it's trying to do. But I will admit, character is very important but... as well. Fair enough. Hmm. Uh, that's why I'll always say I don't think Witcher Three is a very good game. Hmm. I think it's a great experience i don't think it's wow. a very good game though okay i can live with, yeah. i can live with that it's a good f game but it's not a good fallout <laughs> <game>. <laughs> god damn it <laughs>